Okay. It is your time in the spotlight. What do you think? You are a half a year old. Six months. How'd that happen so fast? And you're sitting, and you're crawling, and you're talking, and you're taking big kid bubble baths, and you're hungry, aren't you? Yeah. Do you want to try some fruit? Should we try something yummy? <laughs> Okay, you guys, so little Miss Zoe is six months old. I cannot believe, it makes me super sad, but I'm also really excited at the same time to try solids with her because she has been showing all of the signs that she's definitely ready. They typically say six months is when their digestive system is ready to be able to handle some soft foods. And with the other two, Max and Liv, who are now, Max is gonna be six in December, Liv just turned three in July. We did baby led weaning with both of them and it went so great. So we're gonna go the same route with Zoe, all plant-based, just like the other two. And some other signs to look for. If your baby has good head and neck control, if they're able to sit up, um, she's kind of been doing like the tripod stance to sit up. She just started crawling, which is so crazy. It happened so quickly. And most importantly, they're showing an interest in food. So we switched our high chair to the actual high chair before it was more of like a cradle that she could lay in as an infant. So now we've been setting her up and going through the motions, propping her at the table with us so she can join and see our family dynamics while we eat. And she's just been reaching and grabbing for everything. Sometimes I have to be extra careful because I'll have a smoothie bowl and I'll be holding her on my hip and she'll all of a sudden clamp onto it and it just about topples over. So she's definitely excited and ready to try some fun stuff. And we've got all these little silicone, silicone things that she's been practicing with. So she's really good at like holding the spoon and actually like putting it into her mouth. And a good rule of thumb, especially if you are a newbie, if you have a first child trying solids, just remember under one just for fun. So there is no pressure to like make sure that your infant is actually eating everything that touches their hands. A lot of it's more just experimental and play, getting a taste um, for the, the feel, the smell, the texture, all that kind of stuff. So that helped me tremendously the first time around. Like I said, just take some of that pressure off of being like, oh my gosh, she's not eating or she didn't like it. Look at this. <gasps> Oh my goodness, isn't it so pretty? With Max, we tried banana and avocado and set both in front of him, just like a whole fruit, and let him decide what he wanted to try. And I think we ended up trying av avocado? I think so. Yeah, and then with Liv, I don't know why I can't remember. I feel bad, but that's the middle child for you. <laughs> actually, this was genius though. My, I think it was my mom that told me this. She's like, you should actually give her a mango pit because it's big enough that it's not a choking hazard and it's something they can get their hands on and really gnaw on and it's really sweet and juicy. So I think I might try that first. Oh my gosh, you're so excited. Let me just have a little taste test. Oh, you're gonna steal it? I'm gonna have a little taste test. Come see my That's good. <laughs> Look at that. She's okay, like... <laughs> Here, let me help. Look, you wanna try a taste? Oh. <laughs> She's like, well, that's different. Max's was avocado. Liv was probably banana. Oh. oh. It's just different, isn't it? Really? There's okay. a little bow hair. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't really like it. Man, this mango is good. Zoe, let's <laughs> cheers. This is when life gets really cheers. messy. Uh, 
As much as it's exciting, it's also like, oh my gosh, I wish we had a dog to lick up all the mess on the floors. <laughs> yeah, mom, dogs are like vacuums. They are, I know. Every time something falls on the floor, I still think, where's Bo? Yeah. Where's Joey. She's like, now I get it. Now I get it. Mm -hmm. say mango. Yum. That's a good one. Let's learn to say yum. Yum. Mama. Mama. So it's usually a good idea to start with a single ingredient whole food one at a time, give it a couple days, then work in a new food before you start moving to like a plate full of multiple types of foods of different tastes and textures, simply because you wanna look for any signs of intolerance or allergy, allergic reaction, um, and just cause their tiny brains and tiny hands just need time to really comprehend this new world of food. So we'll give mango a couple more days and let us know in the comments, what should we try next? Also, I think I might share with you guys a little sit down talk about the transition from two to three and how that's been for us and just kind of give an overall recap of the last six months with little Miss Zoe in our lives. And maybe we'll make a snack for the kids in a little bit and I'll bring you guys along for that. So let's go sit down and chat. We've got a grip of my lactation brownies that I always keep on hand. It's either this or lactation muffins. And I always put Sun Warrior in them for a little extra boost of protein. And another change I have made lately is I grind whole oat groats instead of using rolled oats to blend flour. It's just more nutritionally complete. Mm, so good. So that recipe is in our meal planner and recipe app. But right now I'm gonna make a smoothie for the kids. So I'm gonna make my favorite cherry berry acai bowl recipe. So I use wild blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, cherries, a scoop of Sun Warrior vanilla protein. We love Sun Warrior because it's organic, it's raw, it's not processed using any heat. So it keeps all of the beneficial enzymes and proteins intact and it tastes amazing. It just adds that extra little boost of nutrition for all of us. I also really love the Sun Warrior Liquid Light, which I am always putting a capful in my water bottle on a daily basis. This is a Fulvic Trace Mineral Complex. It's gonna be loaded with those trace minerals. It's gonna be a great electrolyte beverage that's not sugary like Gatorade. Think about it, our soils are depleted in these trace minerals. These are things that our bodies need to thrive, to give us energy and metabolism and help our brains and our cells to function properly. So I really love the liquid light. It's a nice subtle taste that I add to my giant water bottle just once every day. So if you guys wanna grab any goods from Sun Warrior, it's linked below along with a 20% discount code. I'm also a huge fan of their Beauty Greens Collagen Booster. I put it in our green smoothies every single day. So it's much better than animal-based collagen because it actually helps your body produce more of its own collagen. No hooves, hides, or horns. So I just do a cup of each berry, blueberry, a little bit extra strawberry, because they're kind of clunky. Blueberry, strawberry, cherry, raspberry. Got three frozen bananas. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of orange juice. Usually I just do water, but that's gonna really help with the taste too. And then I'm gonna do a frozen acai pack. I get the Sambazon unsweetened and our protein. I'm gonna do a scoop and a half actually because this is gonna be like a family size portion. And if you wanna get some of these trace minerals into your kiddo's diet, it's easier to just put it in a smoothie rather than to put it in their water.
there are many things that hold true for the third born. And number one, hand-me-downs. <laughs> Playing with Big Sissy's Barbie car, wearing Big Sissy's clothing that is a little touch too big for her, but so cute. <laughs> Whether we were gonna have a boy or a girl, I was excited either way, and I knew in the back of my mind, yep, this is why we hoarded and saved all of Max and Liv's adorable baby clothes. So I thought I would sit down and give you guys a little six month recap, both six months of growing with little baby Zoe and six months postpartum for me. I've gotten a lot of you asking, what is the transition like from two to three? And to be honest, we have heard it's the most difficult and I would say that has very much so held true. I would feel like we are right at the tipping point um, as far as being tested as parents of three children. Like we're about to really experience what it means to go from two to three simply because it's really easy when they're newborns and they sleep a lot and then they just learn to roll over but they're still immobile. But now that Zoe is crawling, that has been a handful. We have to make sure that there are no chokies or pokies as we call them on the floor because there's so many little Legos and Barbie shoes and things like that. And now that she's starting solid, the messes just become exponential. So always a sticky thing on the floor to wipe up and I'm sure diaper changes are gonna get a lot more interesting. She's been a really great little traveler so far and very well adjusted and I attribute so much of her her easygoingness to not just being the third child, but more, more importantly, having a very, very uneventful pregnancy in a good way and having my first home birth here in Florida. So I feel like it was just so peaceful. My midwife was incredible. She's plant-based, she's Christian. My doula was incredible. So I had a very, very wonderful pregnancy experience and birth team and Everything I had done to prepare mentally and visually really truly came into fruition. It was a very, very quick labor. It was about four hours or three hours of just like really active labor. And then she was out actually right here where I sit in this exact spot on the bed. I thought you guys might also enjoy seeing a little glimpse at the birth story video that our videographer actually put together, which she was incredible as well. So. I didn't even really notice that she was here, but she captured some really, really beautiful shots in the short amount of time that she was here before Zoe was actually out. And then some really amazing moments of us as a family of five for the first time. So the one thing I will say, if you are thinking about having a third child is the oldest child will help a lot. So Max is able to carry Zoe. He's just so good with babies. So that's been really wonderful. And people have said, well, if you go past three kids, it's just easy from there. So I kind of feel like the biggest thing going from two to three is fully having to embrace the surrender, which is difficult for two type A individuals being me and Dusty but it has really helped me to kind of let go of the nitpicky little things um, and realize they just don't matter as much. The little messes get picked up at some point. If Liv wants to wear something or have her hair a certain way, I'm a little bit less apt to get upset or try and make things my way. It makes life a lot more easy and fun and enjoyable when you can just embrace the surrender and be okay with the chaos and know that at the end of the day, you can, you can clean everything up and pick it up. So with all three pregnancies and postpartum, I never really experienced any postpartum depression or any really severe symptoms with like hair loss and all of that. And I really truly attribute that to our diet and lifestyle, which is a big part of why we share what we share, why we created our Eat, Move, Rest Club yearly membership because we still truly believe in and feel like what we're doing works so well. And I think our family of five is a testament to that. The main thing for me wasn't postpartum depression, but it was um, before learning that yes, you have to embrace the surrender. The main thing for me was more like postpartum anxiety, just because I felt a little bit more out of control. I think it was really difficult for Liv and me with our dynamic. So in the back of my mind, I kind of felt like, well, if we have another boy, that means kind of more responsibility for Dusty. And if we have another girl, that means more responsibility for me, especially around this age. 
for Max, right around that like almost six years old age, they really start to identify with their father figure and with men and males. I think that that's been really cool to see. But for me, with both Liv and Zoe, there's only one of me and there's two little girls looking to me, um, identifying with me. I've really had to be more conscientious around devoting that undivided individual time. It's really easy to do with Zoe because she's an infant and she really needs me. And then with Liv, I really have to be like, okay, Dusty, can you watch these two so me and Liv can go get our nails done or even if it's just like five minutes where she wants to be in the garage working out with me and jumping on the little rebounder trampoline or she wants to play friends with her dolls. Just taking those five minute moments here and there and even just making sure that if I'm distracted by Zoe and Liv is like tapping me on the shoulder to like turn and look at her in the eyes and truly let her know that I recognize that she needs me and wants my attention and just like be able to communicate in that way, giving her that eye contact. Also just to give Liv those opportunities to be that great big sister, like really help Liv recognize that Zoe truly looks up to her and loves her so much and wants to play with her because that makes Liv feel needed and like she is stepping into this leadership and responsibility role in a fun and exciting way. So I think that's helped a lot too. So it's not just like mom and Zoe, but it's like Liv and Zoe. And sometimes I can step back and be out of the picture a little bit has been really cool and really helpful for the dynamic between the three of us. It was also difficult because I have been tandem breastfeeding and it was really easy to do that with Max and Liv because Max wasn't quite so attached at the nip, so to speak. He was more just like chill about it, but Liv every night, will like cry when she gets tired and say she just wants milk, so we have to go to bed. And then in the morning, same thing, she pops up and the first thing she'll do is like snuggle in right next to me and say she wants milk. And so at least it's been easy to just have it be first thing in the morning and last thing at the end of the night before we go to sleep. I know it is a handful and not everybody enjoys tandem breastfeeding, but I've, I always just try to put my feet in my future self's shoes when the kids are all grown up and out of the house and be like, there's no messes, there's no sounds, but there's also no laughter and there's also no playing and um, just realizing that I'd rather have life feel full and a little bit hectic and chaotic as opposed to the alternative at this point in my life. I feel like we're young, we're energetic. We are very much kids ourselves, Dusty and I. So I'm just really truly embracing it and going back to that through line of embracing the surrender. What is it? So another big question when you have kids is always, are you done or are you gonna have more? And Dusty and I have always just kind of said, we'll see. And we've kind of just let things happen very naturally and organically, <laughs> kind of with everything in life. Like we like to truly embrace the organic lifestyle, you know, just being pure and authentic and just letting things play out how God has planned for us. So we shall see. But we do know that being that we both come from small families and only having one sibling each, we both have a younger brother, um, we grew up with lots of cousins and Mom. the kids only have one cousin, right? Who's your cousin? Uh, I see, but I'm not young. Young? No, you're getting to be kind of a big kid, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So we knew if we wanted our kids to have that same experience of family being around all the time, we're just gonna have to create it ourselves since they don't have a lot of cousins but Dusty's brother just got married and we're kind of putting the pressure on them now for a change. Like everybody can stop asking us to have more babies and maybe it's their turn so the kids can have another cousin. <laughs> I will just end it with this little nugget of wisdom or piece of advice from someone who doesn't know it all, but I would just say, you know, there's never gonna be the perfect time to have a kid, get a puppy, buy a house, move across the country, start a business. So the best thing you can do is just go for it because you really, you only have one life to live. So if you feel pulled to or drawn to the idea of something, just go for it because no matter what, you can think of life like a GPS. God is like your GPS. Like 
if you make a quote unquote wrong turn, he's just simply going to reroute you. You can't really hit a dead end as long as you just keep going. And I think babies are the perfect example of why we don't ever give up. If we keep going, we will succeed because have you ever seen an infant who just, just decides they're not gonna crawl? So just watching the determination of a little tiny baby learning to roll over and crawl and then walk and then jump off of high things like Max. They just never give up. They will find a way to succeed and you just have to have that mindset in life and just go for the things that you want. And honestly, that's, that's how we feel like we have lived such a full life thus far. And it doesn't come without its difficulties, but it has been so well worth it to have experienced this fullness of life as opposed to not as opposed to retracting because there are too many obstacles or because timing isn't right or money isn't there, whatever it might be. We've just been like, God will provide if this is what his plan is for us. Let's just go for it and, and just trust. And so far it's been such a great mindset to have.